unspoken family rules and commandments that many of us have experienced and patterns that have passed on to us directly impact our ability to see others in this unconditional way and love others and to be in relationships the way that God has called us to. Knowing that our families of origin impacts us is necessary and knowing that we have entered into a new family in Jesus is important, but the hard part is called discipleship. And discipleship is this, becoming more like Jesus is this, learning to put off the old unhealthy patterns of our old family and putting on the patterns of the new family in Jesus. That's why the Bible says that when you come to Christ, we become new people, new creations. Because why? God is doing something new in us and the old has passed away. And so for some of us, we, it's important for us to identify some of these patterns, not to put our families down. Jesus was not putting his family down. He's saying, there's, there's a new way of living. There's a new family that I step into. And so my wife and I, uh, in this cohort, one of the things that we've learned to do is this tool called a genogram. You can look it up, and we'll, we'll offer this in the course when we offer it in the spring. But a genogram is basically like if you look at an org chart, but for your families, and we started working through it, and you begin to identify, like, relational issues or divorce or patterns of abuse and all these things, and you begin to see how it impacts your family now. Why? Not for the sake of putting our families down, but learning to live and putting off the old habits of our old families. And this is what God called the Israelites to in the book of Exodus. We talked about this last week. But when he gives the Ten Commandments, it wasn't just for the sake of giving them rules. They were enslaved for almost 400 years, and they were used to living in Egypt, under the rule of the Egyptians and under slavery, and Jesus, God calls them and says, I will be your God and you will be my people. And here are ten ways. You shall stop doing these things that you used to do. And now, this is what it means to live in this new family. Ben, y'all can come on up. Craig Barnes, he's a pastor, and he says this, a story that he shared about his parents. He says, when I was a child, my father brought home a 12-year-old boy named Roger whose parents had died from a drug overdose. And there was no one to care for Roger, so my folks decided that they would raise him as their own. At first, it was difficult for Roger to adjust to his new home. Several times a day, I would hear my parents saying to Roger, Roger, no, no, this is not how we behave in this family. Or no, no, you don't have to scream or fight to hurt or hurt people in order, order to get what you want. Or no, Roger, uh, we show respect in our family. And in time, Craig says that Roger began to change. Roger wasn't defined by the changes that he made. He was part of the family because his parents had decided that he would be part of the family. But he did have to work hard to be a part of this new family. And this is what discipleship is. This is what following Jesus is. We put off our old ways of living, our old selves. And for many of us, it's what we've inherited from our families of origin. And we put on our new self in Jesus. So here's what I want us to do. Um, I'm going to tell you 10 unwritten, unspoken family commandments that we see in many of our families of origin. And as I read through these, maybe you can identify with a one or two or maybe all of them. If it's all of them, you've got some work to do. Uh, but we're going to identify some things, some patterns, maybe some things that you weren't even aware, some patterns that you've inherited until you see it on a screen that you read it. But 10 family commandments around these topics. See how they have impacted you and who you are today. Number one, around the topic of money. Maybe you grew up in a family where the commandment was that money is the best source of security. Or the more money you make, the more important you are. Or make lots of money to prove that you've made it. And we see when we come to God's family, it's not about making more and accumulating more. It's actually about being generous with what we have, right? Number two, family commandment of conflict. Maybe you grew up in a family that said, Avoid conflict at all costs. Don't get people mad at you. Or maybe loud, angry, constant fighting is normal. Number three, the family commandment around sex. Sex is not to be spoken about openly, which is why some of you guys are getting uncomfortable when you heard that word. Men can be promiscuous, but women must be chaste. Number four, grief and loss. Sadness is a sign of weakness. You are not allowed to be depressed. Get over losses quickly and move on. Number five, expressing anger. Anger is dangerous and bad. You got to explode in anger to make a point. Or that sarcasm is, is an acceptable way to release anger. Number six, family. 
You owe your parents for all they've done for you. Don't speak your family's dirty laundry in public. And duty to family and culture comes before everything else. Number seven, commandment around relationships. Don't trust people because they're going to let you down. Don't ever let anyone hurt you. Don't show any vulnerability. Number eight, attitude towards other cultures. Only be close friends with people who are like you. Do not marry a person of another race or culture. In certain cultures or races are not as good as ours. Unspoken family rules. Number nine, success. Success is getting into the best schools, is making lots of money, is getting married and having children. Number 10, feelings and emotions. You are not allowed to have certain feelings. Your feelings are not important. Reacting with your feelings without thinking is okay. These are some examples. There's probably a million of them, but unspoken family rules and commandments that many of us have experienced and patterns that have passed on to us now, and these patterns directly impact our ability to see others in this unconditional way and love others and to be in relationships the way that God has called us to. I saw this in my own life. There's a couple of those where I'm going, yes, that's my family. I shared this story with y'all before. My parents, their dream when I was in middle school was for me to get the honorable student sticker. You guys remember those? I'm glad that they got rid of those because it was a way for parents to feel proud and kids to feel bad about themselves. And I remember we would see it on cars driving through and my parents would say, you gotta get one of those. I need one of those on my car. And I was like, ah, I'm, not, I'm not making the honor roll. Uh, but I knew that I had to get my parents' approval. And so I worked hard, and I worked hard, and I worked hard. I only did it once because I just wanted their approval. I got on the honor roll. I remember they were saying, you're going to get that sticker at home? I ran to the mail, got that sticker, brought it to my dad, and just started weeping in front of him. It was this release of emotions. Like, I finally did the thing that you wanted me to do so bad. I'm finally accepted. And then I've realized, as much as I've talked about it, as much as I've been in therapy and talked about that exact story, I've realized that when I preach sometimes, inherently, without even saying it out loud, I'm thinking, i got to preach a great message today and God will be pleased with me. Like, our church has to grow and then God will be pleased with me. We have these unwritten rules. It's not about putting our family down, our people down. It's about learning what it means to be in the family of God. In the family of God, for me, God says, you are accepted and loved despite your best days and your worst days. You are accepted and loved, not based on what you have done, but based on what Jesus has done. You have been adopted, brought into this family. There's nothing you have done to earn your adoption into this family outside of my grace and my love for you. And that is putting on my new self in Jesus. And so for many of you, many of us, not all of us, we got to le- relearn what it means to be a part of God's family, and this is what it means to follow Jesus. I spoke with someone in the last service. She's in her 50s, and she says, uh, I've been trying to get my parents out of my head for 50 years, and I still can't do it. It just creeps back up. That's why Pete says, Jesus is in our hearts, but Grandpa's in our bones sometimes. we got to relearn what it means to be in the family of God. I love the story of Joseph because his family was messed up. His brothers sold him to slavery because they were jealous of him, right? He gets sold into slavery. He gets accused of adultery. He gets thrown into a prison, but God raises him up, him up to the highest of rank, second highest rank in Egypt, and his brothers finally come into contact with him, and Joseph finally had a chance to get retribution at his brothers for what they did, but Joseph knew that God was up to something bigger than his family issues and problems. Look what he says. He looks at them in the eye and says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Joseph says, despite our family baggage, God is up to something. And this is especially true when we come to Jesus, who reconciles, heals our brokenness, binds us up. And here's the one thing that all of us need to know. You don't have to work hard to be a part of this family of God. And maybe you're new to church or your first time at church. To become a son and daughter of your heavenly father, you don't have to work. You don't have to try. But when you come into this family, God simply says, hey, let me show you what it means to be a part of this family. 